This is Nathan Wood, pastor of North Dayton Baptist Church, and welcome to day 38 of the McShane Reading Plan. So glad you could join us. We are in Genesis 40, Mark 10, Job 6, and Romans 10. Some hard, hard, hard scripture today, um, but some nourishing uh, nuggets to chew on. Uh, Job 6, uh, Job is a picture-perfect example of how God knows our frame. He knows our anguish. And friends, especially in the person of Jesus Christ, He doesn't just observe from heaven our, our suffering. He has become man, 100% God, 100% man, in the person of Jesus Christ to experience firsthand human suffering. And when we invite Him in, when we are born again, trusting in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, friends, He is dwelling in you in His Holy Spirit <clears throat> and he experiences with you everything that you go through. Not just observing, but he is intimately there with you every step of the way. Now that doesn't mean that he agrees with any sinfulness that you have in you. No, he'll contend with that. The Holy Spirit contends with the flesh in that way. But his heart breaks for our heartbreak. He takes no pleasure in our anguish. Rest assured. So as you read Job, uh, keep that in mind. Also, I like verse six. It's my t it's my scriptural basis for the for my preference of the egg yolk. I love egg yolk. I've always loved uh, um, fried eggs with a runny yolk ever since I was a kid. And my dad would fix me two fried eggs and sauce, Bob Evans sausage and, and biscuits every morning and uh, for breakfast, except on weekends, mom would make pancakes or waffles, but uh, fond memories. And, uh, but I love, love egg yolk. Um, maybe some people don't, maybe that turns some people's stomach, but here in verse six, it says, can that which is unsavory be eaten without salt? Or is there any taste in the white of an egg? Well, I will say that there is taste in the white of an egg if it's fried in bacon grease <laughs> or if it's uh, got seasoning on it or maybe a little butter or something like that um, or, you know, deviled eggs. I love eggs. I, I always love those commercials that said, I love eggs from my head down to my legs. But uh, anyway, that's just kind of a fun passage. The Bible's fun, people. The Bible's fun. Um, well, my light went off. I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to get me a new light. It's starting to short out on me again. I've gone through several of these ones. Um, but anyway, um, seriousness. All right, let's look at um, Genesis 40. Um, talking about suffering. Um, Joseph gets back in the dream interpretation business. And I want you to experience this or consider this. We think of Bible patriarchs as like, oh, they're in the Bible. They're in Bible times. You know, they see God walking down the street all the time. Folks, you realize that his, that Joseph's experience of God was two dreams when he was a kid. And then just writing it out and interpreting other people's dreams on three recorded occasions. Yep. That's the basis of his faith. He didn't have the scriptures, nothing. The testimony of his fathers and a few dreams on his own. We have got a lot more to go on in faith than Joseph did. Will we be as faithful and as, and as steadfast in the love to, for the Lord if things go as poorly for us as they went for Joseph? That's a challenge. Because guess what? He even tries to cut a deal and with that uh, butler, and the butler forgets. It closes the chapter of chapter 40. Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. But forgot him. People will let you down. People will show up late. I've let people down. I've shown up late. It's not a good feeling. Um, 
we are flawed creatures with the best of intentions, sometimes the worst of intentions. Uh, I hope that that's not your case, but we mess things up really bad. We mess things up really bad, but I'm going to draw your attention to Romans 10 now. Verse 3. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Excuse me. This is talking about Judaizers. And folks, this goes for a lot of Gentiles nowadays, too, who are a little struck on themselves and their religiosity and their good works and their stance. They get a little bit too high-headed. And uh, been there, done that. Uh, Lord, help me. But we need to submit ourselves to the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's God that saves. It's God that rescues. It's God that heals. heals. Verse 9 and 10 of Romans 10 are precious, precious verses. For if thou shalt that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Believe that Jesus is Lord God, that he died and rose again, and tell somebody about it. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 13. And then verse 19, But I say, did is not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people. By a foolish nation I will anger you. But Isaiah was very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But unto Israel he saith, All day long have I stretched forth mine hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. What is this? Verse 12, for there is no difference between Jew and Greek. Does that mean, ladies and gentlemen, that Israel is of none effect? Jesus has a lot to say about divorce in our passage in chapter, Mar uh, chapter 10 of Mark. Um, and God hands Israel a bill of divorcement, but God shows that his ideal is not for divorce to take place. Does that mean it doesn't? Absolutely. In this fallen world, it does. But there's mercy for that. But God's own ideal is not to divorce. So Paul is giving us, giving us this magnum opus in Romans in the center of chapters 9 through 11. He's showing us that God has not cast away Israel. The people which he foreknew. That's God's elect, his elect nation. He's not going to cast them aside. Now, individually, anybody who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, Jew or Gentile. There's no difference in salvation. And there's no difference in damnation either, ladies and gentlemen. Anybody who doesn't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, they will perish eternally. So there's no difference there. So just like Joseph saved in the process of saving Israel, his brothers and his father Israel. He saved the entire uh, e Egyptian empire, which at that time spread far and wide. Multiple Gentile nations. So the whole world benefited from the salvation that God purchased through Joseph in to, to save Israel. That's the picture. It's not a picture of some superlative like the disciples bickering about who's greater or who's lesser. That's the Gentile way of looking at it, Jesus says. So G Jesus acknowledges there is a difference between Gentile and Jew. There's a Gentile way of doing things and a Jewish way of doing things. Now, does that mean the Jews do everything right? No. Does it mean the Jew Gentiles do everything wrong? No means that God does everything right. He laid it down for them in the scriptures, in the path of holiness and righteousness. And they transgressed. And because of that transgression, 
the Gentiles have been allowed to take part in the goodness of the Savior. Praise the Lord. And so their folly will turn into blessing for the whole world and they will be blessed as well because of God's mercy and because of God's glory in keeping his promises. That's a, that's a beautiful picture. How is this possible? Ohio State motto, verse 27 of Mark 10, with men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. And remember who our Savior is, blind Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, that's what it means. Verse 47, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me, thou son of David. Your Savior is the son of David. Your Savior is a Jew. So when Paul says there's no difference between Jew and Greek, or Jew and Gentile, he's referring to salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone. He's not talking about, oh, well, I cease to be a, uh, I cease to be a Gentile, I'm now, I'm now something else, or I cease to be a Jew, now I'm something else, or I cease to be a male, I cease to be a female. Yes, we have identity. I am a male, I am a Gentile, and I am grafted in to the, to the blessing of the household of Israel in Christ Jesus. Glory be to God. I'm part of his body, part of his church. Do you know him? Are you part of that? Are you trusting in his blessing and his salvation that he has provided for the world? It's my prayer that you are. If not, please come before it's too late. Trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Believe in him. We love you, and he loves you. Have a good day.